It's an Archeo Death interview with Professor Howard Williams and his guest. Welcome to uh, Pauline Clark, who is a doctoral researcher at the University of Chester and has joined me on this second Archeo Death YouTube interview. Now, uh, for those of you not familiar, I'm Professor Howard Williams, and I've been running this video channel since lockdown began to supplement my ongoing WordPress blog. And uh, I've been just presenting in the landscape and also doing some videos about key debates in mortuary archaeology and heritage. And um, had a video a few weeks ago posted with Dr. Brian Costello, my recently doctored and recently uh, graduated uh, PhD student. And um, it's really great to uh, have a, a follow up video um, into where I have a chat with Pauline, who's my one of my current uh, doctoral researchers uh, here at the University of Chester. So hello, Pauline. How are you? <laughs> I'm fine. I'm very disappointed that I'm second choice, but it is behind Brian. So I can't really say very much. Can well, I? he's a few years ahead of you. You know, you've, he's been going longer at this whole uh, <laughs> PhD ex escapade. So, uh, you know, but uh, don't, don't feel too. Uh, you'll be ahead of many other illustrious people who I'm sure <laughs> will be in due course to to uh, um to honor the hallowed halls of archaeo death on youtube but you know we'll, we'll see how that goes yeah uh, um how much hate mail we get but anyway uh <laughs> lovely to see you and thank you for agreeing to do this uh mm -hmm. I, I wanted to really just use this video as an opportunity to uh discuss with you some of the things you've been up to as a student or maybe of use to other potential students current students current researchers to know what you're you're about what you've been doing and how you got to be where you are and what you're up to now so um if you know i wanted perhaps we could start with uh talking about you know you, you what you did before and how you came to be an undergraduate student of archaeology? Oh well really different. Um, I was a buyer in the automotive industry and as you can see I'm a little bit older than your average student and when I went from uh, full-time to part-time work I thought it was a chance to do um, a degree and I must confess I was just going to do a history degree and I wasn't going to come to Chester and then I came to one of the open days and Chester just impressed me so much that there was I wasn't going anywhere else then and also at the time I picked up a, a leaflet that said you could do a combined degree history and archaeology I thought, okay that might be good so I didn't uh, it wasn't the intended path but it's turned out to be the major path and it was it's it was a good decision oh, of course you've I forgot your history archaeology combined yeah in the end but because yeah. i had to deal with you as an undergraduate mainly through uh, i think you did medieval britain went in my second year module my level five module i think you may have done that one um certainly you i supervised your dissertation didn't i you did yes yeah much to your ongoing pain yes you did <laughs> it was and um, it, was, it was about prone burial really I, if i recall correctly Something yeah well I, I, one of the books i'd read when i was on the course was andrew reynolds book about uh, deviant burials and it just seemed to me that not all prone burials were bad burials. Um, so, yeah, I thought I'd write about that. So you were looking at uh, the later Saxon stuff or were you looking at the early Anglo-Saxon cemeteries, the early sort of 5th, 6th century stuff? Or? Yes, I was looking at those mainly. But I must admit the Bull Hole um, Cemetery in Northumberland wasn't published then. And I, I would that actually supports what I was trying to say, but I didn't have the benefit of that then. So maybe it wasn't the best thesis it could have been, but they got me there. Well, mine was a bit rubbish. <laughs> <laughs> Undergraduates is very much, uh, you try to do some research, hope to get some somewhere, you end up somewhere different. Um, and along the way, you come up with some good ideas. And I think you did very well. So uh, that's, uh, was, I mean, what else do you recall of those day, days before the lockdown? Remember when you were an undergraduate back in mm -hmm. 2018? Yeah, can anyone remember 2018 anymore? I don't know. But uh, <laughs> what, what else struck you about your undergraduate days? The, the things that, that really stick in my mind is in the first year at Chester, you do what I always described as all the history and all the archaeology of the British Isles. And it was fascinating. We had different lecturers for each time period and everybody was absolutely amazing they presented their their topic and their you know their point of view in such a, a an amazing way that just made you think really hard and it was fab i really really enjoyed the first year it really opened my mind and went downhill after that yeah no it was really good i mean the the one thing I would say is that if you're going to be a combined student, you really have to to consider that that limits your choices of some of the modules you take. And maybe if I did, if I had my time over again, I would 
tackle things differently. But, you know, that's hindsight and that's you get fine. You the benefit of two subjects, but it does mean you can only do so much. You're not yeah. doing two degrees, are you? So, yes, it does, right. does lift you down. But then you decided um, that wasn't enough. Yeah, yeah, I'm a glutton for punishment and I thought I'd stay on and do an MA at Chester again. Um, and this time I did past landscapes and environments. One of the excavations that I've been lucky enough to uh, have the opportunity to take part in with Chester lecturers was at Star Car, the Mesolithic site um, in North Yorkshire. And uh, we sampled peat while we were doing that. And from there, I decided to, to do an MA in past landscapes. And my dissertation for that was looking at the environment at the time of the Mesolithic and Star Car from the peat samples that we'd taken while we were digging. Wow, so from prone burial to peat. <laughs> yes, yeah, and peat's much easier, I have to say, to dig in than anything else in the world. That's a pretty exciting opportunity to be on one of the sort of premier sort of areas, that zone of excavations going on in the Vale of Pickering and uh, and, and to be able to deploy that. Uh, I would say No Name Hill or No Name Island. Yeah, or that's wood. right, No Name Hill, yeah, which is which is near the famous Star Car site, but on the, as you say, on the environs of Lake Pickering. But that's another thing about Chester. Everybody's at the cutting edge of things. So it's difficult to avoid these fantastic opportunities, really. So, um, and but then you start, that wasn't enough again. And no, 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 no. Back, back to a PhD. So how did that all happen? Uh, I'm still wondering myself. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Again, because it's straddled, you're one of these, we'll come on to this, but you straddled the, the lockdown. So you were in this situation where you've been working away while dealing with everything else that's going on as a PhD student, which is really tough. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I've had it, I've had it reasonably easy, but the lockdown has made things difficult. No access to books and libraries. Fortunately, online resources are there. I'm fortunate enough to be able to afford to buy a certain amount of books. So, yeah, I've kept busy over the lockdown, but it has been difficult. And the sooner it all stops and we get back to normal, the better. It's going to be literally in a few, three weeks, we'll all be dancing around. Yeah, I do hope so. <laughs> three, <laughs> right, three, three, three. in Wales. <laughs> yeah, well, um, so, um, so, yeah, your PhD, tell me about what that's what's, what's that, it's all about. Uh, um, material culture before the march. Well, yes, um, our local archaeological society, Chester Archaeological Society, offer a certain amount of funding every two years to write um, an article for their journal based on the um, portable antiquities scheme for the county. And a couple of years ago, somebody wrote about the coins that had been found in Cheshire, and I opted to have a look at early medieval finds. So in between doing uh, BAs and MAs, I was writing this article for Chester. And then um, you're, you yourself are very involved in, in borderlands and the marches, you know, even the Office Dyke Collaboratory. And it just occurred to me that maybe, because not an awful lot is known about how that border was handled during the Middle Ages. We know the Mercian Kingdom took so much and the Welsh princes fought back so much, but it's still in the Dark Ages to a point. Um, and I just wondered if the material culture of the whole marches area would throw some light on what happens so that's what i'm looking at at the moment fantastic so how far are you in at the moment then uh, i'm 10 months in and i think that's about enough of a comment <laughs> <laughs> i've started plotting, started plotting distribution of the fines and looking at the type of items that have been turned up there but um perhaps jumping to a point i was going to come to later you've already mentioned this publication for the uh, journal of the I think it was J J Cast Journal yeah. of Chester, Chester Archaeological Society. Society. Yeah. Um, you did that work during your under your master's degree, but yeah. it's been an ongoing process of editing it, and it's now out. It is it's out, out, yeah. I don't have a physical copy. I think it must be still in the post somewhere, but I've got a PDF of it. So congratulations. Uh, Thank you. Um, so that that's that's sitting there, almost like a part of a part of one bit of your literature review and part of your results that's sort yeah. of but it's not you're, you're going to go much broader aren't you you're looking at lots of counties but that's great to have under your belt yeah well I think the article as it says is a survey really but obviously in the PhD I'm going to go a lot more into the symbology and what the finds actually tell us so yeah yeah it is a start though and thank you to Mr Carrington from Chester Archaeological Society for his for the opportunity really and his support 
uh, he's a is a expert in Roman and everything to do with Chester and its environs archaeology, and he's the current editor and long-standing editor of the journal. So he's a it's a, a, a font of wisdom and editorial knowledge. Is is Peter? He's in many ways. He's stepped back from the edit, edit, editorial role now, so I think I've broken him. Yes. Oh, well, it's all your fault, then. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now, yeah, well, we'll, we'll blame you. Uh, <laughs> and, and of course, it's, it's not just that you've been doing um, an undergraduate degree, an MA, and then now a PhD on very different topics, but developing your interests in, in different environmental landscape perspectives and material culture perspectives, and the synergy between the two. But also, you've been you you volunteered, or I don't, or maybe I did strong arm you into doing it. I can't remember. But you volunteered to help me with editing of the student conference proceedings that I've been doing because you're combined on a student. You weren't one of the researchers presenters in the third year, but you volunteered to join me on the editorial team of the book that came out at the very beginning of this year called Digging into the Dark Ages, Early Medieval Public Archaeology. It's looking at public archaeology, the politics, the contemporary society synergies of the early Middle Ages. So is is um, tell us about that a bit. Well, again, as you say, um, I wasn't it, it wasn't my module because I was combined on the student, but it was definitely an area was I was interested in. And I went to the conference. Uh, it was my own uh, year my own colleagues that were, were it, yeah. managed and ran the conference um and then afterwards we were just talking one day and you said you know you needed an editor and i volunteered with no idea of what it involved i have to say Are you a fool? Um, <laughs> <laughs> yes yeah there's a saying isn't there about never volunteer for everything no no <laughs> but it was it was fantastic you know to be able to participate in 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 editing a volume is something that will stand me in good stead in the future it was it was really good it turned into a beast uh, i've got it on the shelf here i'm going to do a separate video about this i haven't done one about this book yet um i, I uh, but it is a huge uh, monster of a book and uh, you you were you were there from the beginning to the very end uh 355 pages to the end um, yeah. but uh, you know you were there through the whole process and uh, and and uh, you not only helped with the introduction writing um um, um, and the editing of individual chapters but of course um, there was the you know you helped with one of the student pieces that wasn't really picking up and you helped me write a, a piece about dark age museums or early middle ages in in museums so that was really grateful because I wasn't going to do that without some guidance and some moral support uh, but we, we got through that didn't we and it's a really good little piece I, I really with that so there's not too much dedicated to looking at early <laughs> middle ages in museums and that's a very important topic at the moment uh, it is yeah it's a very relevant book it's it's really interesting and and very varied topics as well really covered the whole spectrum and we had some uh, this is the book where I, I tried out the interview technique uh, yes. for the first time so you were scouring through my interview transcripts and 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 querying some of the things that were said and mainly because either they didn't make sense or I transcribed them slightly in error. But, you know, it was, uh, it, it's all there now, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. That interview format's really good, though, isn't it? I mean, you know, it, it brings out the expertise of different people and different people's point of view probably better than a structured article. Well, so I've, I must admit, I've seen them done before and I've seen some of them work and some of them make you think, I'm not really getting much out of it, but I, I certainly think they worked together and complemented the other papers, you know, so as well as the standard format papers by the students and the, the other authors, there is, yeah, I think it, it worked really well. And so it's, it's, it brought people that would otherwise not be in the book, into the book yes. by saying, hey, I know you don't have time to write an entire paper. How about a reflection? But it, some of it is really rigorous and detailed yeah. and they added their own citations. And yeah, so it, it wasn't, they weren't lightweight papers. They're really no, quite, not at all. You know, in depth so yeah so i'm quite uh buy it at all good bookshops or yes. download it for free from the archaeo press website which well, i just cite it just cite it somewhere yeah smells fresh still even after all these months <laughs> in an office <laughs> always like the fresh smelling book yeah and that was a bit that was a victory of the lockdown as well because we couldn't have a proper launch could we and we didn't have a proper launch no. happened, uh, um, but that wasn't enough for you was it because not only did you help me with that one but then the next year group of students did their conference on a different theme, the public archaeology of frontiers and borderlands. And um, I did get another student editor to help from, from that year, Kieran Gleave, but you agreed to help me with that as well. So uh, it's, it's forthcoming at the moment. Yeah, well, it's yes, it'll only be a couple of weeks, won't it? It will. Yeah, and that one was that one was completely that was a completely new subject for me, Frontiers and Borderlands, but it fitted in quite well with what I was hoping to do for the PhD. 
Yes, of course, because that was before you'd started the PhD that you agreed yeah. to get involved. Yes. Yeah. yeah. And, and you Kieran, attended the conferences, so you knew what they were going to be roughly. Yes. Yeah. yeah, I did. And Kieran, the other student, he set up the peer reviews. He did really well at that because it was his first experience. But I felt maybe I knew a little bit more at what I should be doing to support you with that one. Yeah, yeah. A bit more. But it's, uh, yeah, tremendous experience. And no, I'm not doing a third one. No. <laughs> <laughs> I've got new victims, I mean, new uh, co-editors uh, <laughs> to help me with uh, the yeah. next one, which is going to be out, The Public Archaeology of Treasure. Aha! Treasure is, is going to come out next year. I'm working on that with uh, two students and uh, Port of Antiquity Schemes, Peter Evil. Uh, yeah. um, so uh, that's going to be great. It was a great, con they've all been good conferences. They've got better and better. And uh, but the, and the books I think I'm very proud of uh, combining students and uh, scholars and uh, I think you know it's, yeah but I, I, I think maybe you've got a PhD to focus on now yeah, and I think so, yeah. you've got multiple publications under your belt way ahead of the, of the point where many PhD students have a publication record but you know it's great to you, you know to have that experience and uh, well, I don't know. I've, I've been lucky it's not you know you've given me the opportunity to do it so that, that I'm very grateful for that and I always will be just a word on the conferences themselves you say that the last one the public archaeology of treasure was the best one i think it was and i think the audience yeah. because of what people don't know is that anybody can come to these conferences yeah, yeah. so you have flos you have members of the public members of the local archaeological societies as well as um, students there but the audience participation in the last one was fabulous they asked the right questions they developed the, the arguments it was very good and um we they're all captured on video apart from the digging into the dark ages one where we were worried about the sensitivity of some of the students who are addressing issues about religion race you know and we didn't want that videoed uh no. in case it attracted the crazies um online uh, <laughs> uh, but but the others are all recorded on yeah. on uh, to video and can be watched uh, but also the books are developments from there with many other commissioned papers and I, I think the next one is going to be uh, the sixth one is um, going to be on the 28th of January on digging into um, what's it called Digideth uh, uh, sort of public public digital archaeologies but looking at mortality so mortuary archaeology as the first book was um uh, one before you were involved uh, but uh, with ben wilsey's and jenny osborne on public archaeology of death but but looking at digital dimensions but it's gonna be a digital conference so uh that's gonna be bring its new challenges to it so it'd be very much like this but uh, for a whole audience but that's gonna happen so I'm not sure I'll lead any more publications out of it because it's exhausting. I've, I'm two, <laughs> two books a year and a journal a year yeah. at the moment, which is perhaps some would say is unsustainable amount of uh, yeah. academic output. Um, but I, I'm trying my best to retain that commitment to the students to get these things out because uh, I think it's a great opportunity for those who want to get involved. Um, <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> While you're on about online conferences, though, when the lockdown first occurred, you were probably one of the first academics to launch an online conference. Oh, you helped yes. me with that as well. Yes, yeah, again, you gave me the chance to help with that too. Special yeah, special offer. I forgot yeah. about that. Yeah, yeah, of course. Yeah, well, that, that was one of the first. I can't even remember back. You see, my time, my memory is going. You see, back back in the dim days of March and April of 2020. Do you remember that? Yeah. That, oh, that, before you were, you know, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because you know, we, we literally I had two weeks to turn around an event that was then cancelled, and uh, you helped with that, and you were going to be helping on uh, in a village yeah. hall in Shropshire helping me with the actual logistics of the day but it just turned into very much an online thing but but it was still moral support and uh, and again that links to your doctoral research which is on yes, front of land material yeah. culture so it all connects in sorry you were a trendsetter everybody followed you online oh no well no, but no actually well, this is the thing i don't know if they were actually following me but there was a moment where everyone was just cancelling stuff and then yeah. people started realizing and I'm not saying I was instrumental in any regard with that, but I think people did realise, yeah, we can't do this. And I, for the public engagement project of the Office Like Collaboratory, we'd agreed to have a public day conference at Trevonan, which is a key node on the Office Like path and with the dike running through the village where we could discuss these issues and do a guided tour. So I, I decided, you know, let's just do it online. It was masses of work, both up to the event and afterwards. But, you know, I feel... I was right in that decision because um, the Office Dyke Association, they, they're a charity. 
they they need the support and that momentum and they're really you know having the academic input is really important so I, I'm, I'm glad I didn't just put it on hold and so yeah, yeah. And I think that helps to keep the momentum going of all the things we're doing at Chester doesn't it and uh, yes it is. yeah and the state they've been in this year they really needed the support so it was yeah, right. yeah. it's been a tough year for many many people but charity yeah. in particular um, yeah. I was going to ask you about you know you have been obviously academically developing yourself as a researcher you know um, from undergraduate to postgraduate getting involved in books getting involved in conference organization but you've also been doing field work too tell us about that and um, well again I've been very fortunate in the opportunities um, I've, I've dug at Star Car which we've already discussed yeah. um, Dr Caroline Pudney also of the University of Chester has given me a couple of opportunities of working on mainly Roman sites because that's her interest but also earlier period sites and again it came from you you circulated the email from Dr Kat Jarman who works on the uh, Viking sites at Repton so I went along there as well met a, a great bunch of students from across the country I'm in contact with all of them still it's really that's good fantastic. fun and I found a brooch my claim to fame that's it my my digging career has peaked now so you, can, you can retire from digging now if you found Please. a brooch yeah <laughs> oh, fantastic no, I mean, but, people need to realise how rare that is for any sort of late Saxon or um, early medieval site. You know, yeah. the one with associated with the Viking winter, winter, the Viking great army and the winter camp. You know, it's fantastic. Yeah. yeah. We were getting a bit blasé, actually, because we turned two brooches on the same day. So, yeah, we were a bit, yeah, another brooch. But I, I noticed in the newspapers today that Dr. Caroline has uh, found the possible site of a Roman villa in Wales. Yes. So I'm hoping that if COVID is all finished and over next year I'll be able to help her with that excavation. Well who cares about the Roman villa but it's what happened to the site afterwards after at the end of Rome that's what we're yes. interested in isn't it? Yeah, I, I, it's complete. Yeah, I mean we, fantastic find. Yeah what did Rome's ever do for us? The, yeah. the life history of that site when when it stops would be fascinating. Yeah. yeah. Oh yeah. Gosh well we've covered a lot of stuff and I hope that serves as a showcase of one of our doctoral researchers and all the things you've been up to Pauline. I mean we, we like you I hope we're out of this and uh, you can not resume because you've been plodded like me you've been charging on through doing helping with all the editing and doing your research and you've done most of your literature review your methodology you didn't say that but I know it's true. <laughs> but, <laughs> But, you just carry on thinking that it'll be fine yeah, no no it's, it's there it's just there i mean like like most of my work is there it's in their brain somewhere yeah, it just hasn't yeah. written it out who needs who needs keyboards after all <laughs> but my point is that you've done so much uh, i mean w i mean you're doing full-time phd so you hope to be wrapped up in two two and a half years from now yeah uh, you know what, what do you think might happen after that who knows Oh, yeah. I mean, dream job will be an FLO, but I will, my other dream job is, is lecturer. So who knows? Who knows where we're going to go? We'll see. Hey, and you just you're going to be doing some of my first year teaching, aren't you, uh, next year? So on the, on the early middle ages. Yeah. Yeah. They don't know what they're in for. <laughs> <laughs> With my bearish yeah, PowerPoint it. slides and your eloquence, uh, they can but be uh, in, you know, informed. <laughs> yeah yeah I won't say what you said to me earlier but yes that's fine it look that that's going to be a real experience but of course it's going to be made even more difficult by the fact it'll have to be remote teaching so easy peasy Who, yeah, yeah. It's, it's it's challenging actually it's a different whole setup and uh no it's not easy so but we'll we'll, we'll, we'll help you well I'll talk you through that and uh hopefully it'll be all right I hope so thank you very much and thank well, you for all the opportunities no it's been good it's been great fun so thank you for the um Thank you for the chat, which I think will be interesting, as I said, hopefully to other researchers interested in your doctoral research. I think primarily is what I hope people will get out of this, uh, but also all the other things you've been doing as you've been developing your skills and expertise. But for now, I shall say farewell and uh, get on with that research, you, uh, which is my that's my basic. That's my supervisory technique uh, yeah, it is. in a yeah. nutshell. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, <laughs> physical and virtual digital nutshell sent out with, with get on with it you but no and um, we've been having a, um, a lot of super super misery meetings <laughs> talking through uh, all all of the miseries and uh, uh, but it's been good fun so far and uh, let's let's good good luck with it all and moving forward and uh, this next book out we should have to, a proper book release of both books the one from the beginning of the year that you were co-edited and this one with kieran co-edited with me and we, we should have some kind of digital shindig even if we can't actually yeah, get sure. together but yeah, uh, hopefully more that. news on that in coming weeks all right thank you very Bye. much
Take care, Pauline. Uh -huh. Bye. -bye. If you've enjoyed this Archeo Death video, why not check out the Archeo Death blog at howardwilliamsblog.wordpress.com.